So I refuse any longer to be intimidated or browbeaten by the tears. If you had any heart in you, you would be crying for the Palestinians, not for what's been done. Now, Dr. Professor Norman Finkelstein. Not one country in the entire Arab world wants to help them. The, Why? This is, the thank you. I'll answer it one simple sentence. We, Why we're gonna, did any of the European countries or the United States want Jews before the Nazi Holocaust? Maybe the Jews were like the Palestinians. They were so horrible. Or as the current Israeli government calls them, human animals. Do you think that's the reason? This is Do you think that's the reason? You're smiling, but your stupid smirk won't change the fact that the very argument you used it was used by Hitler to justify the extermination of the Jews. Nobody What's wants argument? them As because what? they're so terrible and so horrible. You're a Nazi speaking now <laughs> in those kinds of arguments. This is another key point that they always bring out to justify the ethnic cleansing, the genocide that's happening right now. This is what's happening. Israel is basically saying, get the hell out of Gaza. We are coming full force for Hamas. We do not want to kill civilians. Please leave. Now, what is Hamas thing? saying? Stay. We need you. We need you to stay here. Why? Because Hamas uses its citizens to protect Hamas, whereas Israel uses the IDF to protect its citizens. Let me say that again. Hamas uses its citizens to protect Hamas as human shields, whereas the IDF will use, uh, will protect its citizens. So if you, if, if, um, if Israel, if Hamas put down all their guns, all their weapons, there would be peace. If Israel put down all their guns and all their weapons, they would all be dead. The moral equivalency is not even close. So human shields, it's often repeated. You've probably got sick of answering the question, but this is something that's used to justify the attack on civilians. Human shield, the human shielding isn't a precisely defined term in international law, uh, but it generally refer, refers to the conscription, the forcible conscription of civilians uh, in order to uh, protect either uh, combatants or military sites. That's more or less, as I said, it's not a, uh, a legal term. Uh, the evidence that has not been legally defined, but that's generally how people use the term. The forcible conscription of civilians to either shield combatants or to shield military sites. Now, I've read the entire record, hum, uh, human rights record on the Israel-Palestine conflict since I would say, uh, probably since, yeah, since around 2000. I've read before 2000, but exhaustively beginning 2000. No, actually, I would say even earlier, probably the first intifada. So that would be 1988. Uh, there's been no uh, record of Hamas using, I, I have to be careful about these things because we're covering a long period. Hamas doesn't even emerge until the late 1980s. So let's just go to 2000. The first major operation, uh, Israel's operations, its high-tech massacres, uh, occurs in Operation Defensive Shield in 2002, when it went into Janine, uh, when Israel went into Janine, the city of Janine. So if you look at that whole period, let's just take one example, which I, which has been the most exhaustively documented, and that's the Operation Cast Lead in 2008-9. Uh, Amnesty International did the most exhaustive study of what happened during what Amnesty called the 22 days of death and destruction, and namely the Israeli, what Israel calls the Operation Cast Lead. And it found no evidence that Hamas engaged in human shielding. Now, 
there are two further points I have to make. Point number one, there is a distinction in international law between what's called um, human shielding, which as I said, is not a legally defined term, and what's take what's called taking all feasible precautions, taking all feasible precautions in the course of combat, not to endanger civilians. Now that does have a legal standard uh, and a legal definition. You, in the course of combat, you're required by international law to take all feasible precautions to avoid civilian casualties. And there have been some cases, as would inevitably be the case when you're dealing with the most densely populated place on God's earth, there are going to be some places where Hamas is going to be firing a rocket or a projectile from a civilian area. That's just unavoidable given the nature of Gaza. So there has been some claims, some claims, not a lot, but some, and we want to stay faithful to the factual record, that Hamas hasn't taken all feasible precautions to wage combat away from civilians. But there's a second side to the story which all the human rights organizations document. Yes, there has been a lot of human shielding. There has been a lot of human shielding going on in Gaza. But you know who's conducting the human shielding? It's Israel. Israel takes civilians and fires from behind them. Israel... Israel wow. wow, so this is, this is documented by all the human that's rights not organizations? That's controversial. Israel takes civilians when it takes over an apartment building and places the civilians in front of the windows and then fires from behind the civilians. Israel takes wow. civilians and forces them to sit, be, sit beside tanks. There has been human shielding and it's been widely and repeatedly documented, yes, Israel has carried out the human shielding. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.